Hey guys, and welcome back. Now, let's be real for a moment. Even if you aren't as uncoordinated as I am, I'm sure you still know how difficult learning a new sport can be, and becoming really good at a sport is even harder. To go from being a rookie to playing professionally is a long process that requires heaps of practice, a bit of feedback, and tons of motivation. Today, we're going to take a look at that lengthy process, breaking it down into the three key stages of learning, a framework devised by a couple of lads called Fitz and Posner. These progressive stages are known as the cognitive, the associative, and autonomous stages of skill acquisition. For each stage, I'm going to give you three key characteristics to remember, which will help you differentiate between each one when it comes to your exams. As always, to get an idea of where this content is all coming from, you can just check out the syllabus dot points we've got below the video. Other than that, let's get straight into it. Alrighty, first up we've got the cognitive stage, and here it is all about the basics. At this point, you've never done the skill before and you're trying to learn what to do and how to do it. Which brings me on to the first key feature of this stage. Big mistakes, and lots of them. Yep, at this stage, your technique is probably going to be all over the place. You'll be making lots of mistakes and there's going to be a lot of inconsistency. Which leads us to the second key characteristic of the cognitive stage. Feedback has to be external, and this is super important. At this stage, you're not receiving any internal feedback, as you aren't able to criticise your own ability very well. For example, if you're trying to learn how to do a layup, and you take three steps instead of two before shooting, you probably won't even notice. That's why having a coach to provide ongoing, positive feedback on what you need to improve on is so important. Another key characteristic of this stage is developing a clear mental picture of the skill, like for example, with our basketball player, breaking up the key movements of a layup and visualising them. Having a clear mental picture of executing the skill will develop an athlete's understanding of how the skill should be performed. This is also why we call it the cognitive stage. Remember, cognitive refers to thinking, so in this stage we're still having to think really hard when trying to complete the skill. Okay guys, so that there is the cognitive stage. Big mistakes, external feedback, and the need to form a clear mental picture are all key characteristics of this one. Once we have started to get the basics, you move up into the associative stage. In the associative stage, it's time to start improving technique and skill execution. The first key aspect of this stage is, it's all about practice. In the associative stage, there is a lot of repetition of the skill, as the athlete works on technical aspects such as timing, fluidity and sequencing. For example, once our basketball player knows how to do a layup, they'll practice it over and over, moving at a faster pace, and in game-like situations or a sequence with additional skills like passing. Repetitive practice creates this synchronization between the brain and the body, which helps us to develop a deep awareness of how to perform a skill effectively, bringing us on to aspect two. In the associative stage, the learner's internal feedback and keen aesthetic sense will begin to develop. Now your keen aesthetic sense is your awareness of your body's movement and position in space. It's that sense you get when you know you've performed a skill correctly, or completely wrong. For example, at this stage, the basketball player will begin to sense when he's made a mistake, before he's seen the outcome. Your intrinsic feedback is the mental feedback you give yourself on how you've performed. So, if the basketball player performed the layup and missed, the intrinsic feedback might tell him it was because he didn't jump high enough. This is where the differences to the cognitive stage come in. In the associative stage, the player really starts to be able to understand and improve the movement while they do it, as opposed to where they're just thinking about it really hard beforehand and not being able to spot errors as they go. This also explains why it's called the associative stage. It's where the player starts to associate the way they're moving with either a positive or negative outcome, so they can start to understand what works well and what doesn't. The two go hand in hand. As you gain knowledge of your performance from your keen aesthetic sense, it is translated into your intrinsic feedback. The third key characteristic of the associative stage is less errors. The learner will make less errors than they did in the cognitive stage, and the errors will be less frequent. This is because of the athlete's improvement. So, maybe instead of stuffing up every second shot, the learner might make one mistake out of five. 
All right, that wraps up the associative stage. It's all about practice, internal feedback, kinesthetic sense, and less errors. Now, you can progress from here into the autonomous stage, but doing this is pretty difficult and requires a lot of dedication, which is why most people never do. This is where the rep players and professionals sit. By reaching this stage, the learner has a higher degree of accuracy and consistency in performing the skill. Making the first key characteristic, the skill comes automatically and fluently. Here, the athlete's kinesthetic sense is well developed and the skill comes as second nature, which means they don't have to think about how the skill should be executed, they just do it. It's automatic. For example, if our basketball player is at the autonomous level, they won't have to think about the process of the layup, they'll just do it. Alright, the second aspect of the autonomous stage is the athlete's ability to redirect their focus. Instead of focusing on the execution of the skill, they are able to concentrate on other cues or external factors like the opposition, the starting whistle or maybe the weather. To improve performance, this means training sessions for autonomous level players should mimic pressurised game or competition situations. The base skills are almost too easy for them. Alright, the final characteristic is the type of feedback. At this stage, the athlete is able to detect and correct pretty much all of their errors. Their feedback is almost entirely intrinsic. Now, you may be thinking, if they can give themselves all their own feedback, why do elite athletes still have coaches? Remember, not everyone's perfect. There's of course going to be a few minor corrections that athletes need at this stage, that they may not immediately pick up on themselves. Coaches tend to have a good scientific understanding of the sport to help fix biomechanical errors, but for the most part, athletes can rely on their internal feedback. So guys, that wraps up the three stages of learning, cognitive, associative, and autonomous. Remember, the cognitive stage is all about learning the basics of a skill. You're still having to think about it hard just to get the basics. Then, once you've nailed the basics, you're moving into the associative stage. Here, it is all about practice and working on improving things like technique and timing. Most people never progress past this stage, but if you do, you move into the autonomous stage. This is where you're pretty much a pro. Athletes don't really have to think about the performance of the skill. It comes automatically, so you can focus on other things like the opposition. So, to help you remember, let's think of these like learning the basics, practice, 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 and I'm a pro. All right, guys, that's all from me today. I'll catch you in the next video.